Hey guys, welcome back to Tool Review Wednesdays. I know I got a little Elvis thing going on here, but very it's cold out, Chad. Oh, that's horrible. But anyways, today we're going to go over a few different functions of the OTC Encore. So part two of the OTC Encore, we're going to use it on a couple different vehicles. We're going to start off with a 2009 Ford Escape, and then we're going to jump to this vehicle right here, 2015 Ram Eco Diesel, and we're going to check out a few different functions on there and let you guys get a good sense of what the scan tool is all about. All right, let's go ahead and try it out on a couple different vehicles. Now, the first one's going to be a 2009 Ford Escape. But first, I want to show you the actual boot up time it takes for this thing to fully come up to the menu screen on here. So what we're going to do is boot it up in live in real time for you guys, get a general sense of how fast this thing is. So I plugged in the DLC cable right there. And as you can see, it automatically boots up on there, which is a really, really nice feature, nice time-saving feature because a lot of times you need more than just one thing to diagnose a vehicle. So you plug it in, throw it in the seat, go open the hood, get all our diagnostic equipment, like a multimeter, stuff like that, while it's booting up. So it's a nice little feature they had programmed right into here. And as you can tell, it doesn't take too long anyways to actually load up on here. So what we're gonna do is adjust, here we go. And we're going to try to show you a couple different functions on here. Now, the first thing I want to show you is the auto ID function on here, which works for just about all of the domestic vehicles, uh, OBD2 vehicles. So we're going to put the key on so the PCM powers up. And you simply hit select vehicle on there. And what that'll do is it'll go into the different options you have. You can enter it by the VIN, you can auto ID, and you can go to generic OBD2. I like that right there. What I notice is that this will you know, it'll auto ID like my 15 Ram, no problem, but like a 15, um, was it a 15 Jetta, it wouldn't auto ID it. So you still had global functions, but you didn't have auto ID and manufacturer specific functions. So that it, the functionality is always expanding on there and it's something to be aware of. Domestics seem to have really good coverage on here. So I want you to make sure to have the key on so we can ID it and the PCM starts talking. And that's definitely it. So we'll select it. Looks right to me. And the first thing it does is it brings up the con controller menu on here. So what I'll do is I'll go through a few of the, you know, more interesting ones on here. Okay. One thing to note on here is all those different controllers. Let me go back to that real quick. All these different controllers that are on here, okay, are the ones that can be on the vehicle. It's not the ones that are on the vehicle. Like I can tell you right now, I don't have 4x4, and I don't have a PAM module on here either for the park aid. So these are the ones that are that could be on here based on the make and model and year. So what we're going to do is go into the engine, the PCM, and this is what this is the kind of menu it's going to give you each time you select one of the modules. You can read the DTCs, live data strings, special functions if they apply, some diagnostic information, maintenance tests, which is generic over a couple different modules. Um, let me click on it real quick so you guys can see what I'm talking about. You know, like a battery charging system test, brake service, TPMS registration, steering service, like calibrations. So it's real, real generic on there. Uh, but it'll always show up on there on each one of these menus. This is a function that I like. You bring a vehicle in and you have multiple problems on it. You want to know what all the modules have for DTCs in them. A lot of times, one module is causing a DTC in the other module. So let's say you had a 4x4 problem, and you, you, that's what the customer brought it in for. Well, guess what? It gets all its speed information from the ABS module. So if the ABS module is having problems, you want to query that one also to make sure there's no sensor faults. Okay, so it gives you a lot of good information. That's one screen, one tap, and it's querying all the modules, you know, for history codes. Now, what's nice on here is this may take a little bit of time, especially on newer vehicles where there's 40 modules on the vehicle. But in the meantime, see, we got a code right here for the TPMS. We can go look into that while it's querying the rest of the modules still. So we get a little more information. We got the code and the description of it. So we can get a little more information that way. Right now, I just finished querying all the modules on the network for DTCs and errors. So now it's building a report. And then we can go into that, look at that next, right here. And what this is, is just a really good, nice, clear menu 
of everything it found on the vehicle. So these modules are not responding like they shouldn't be on my vehicle. And then no codes, no codes, no codes, and more information. Now it's nice, right from the same menu, without going into other controllers, you simply click on that DTC. And then it gives you a lot of good information here, actually. Top reported fix, and, and all this other information right here, okay, with the code assist. And then you have um, some other information on here, as long as you subscribe to different services like all data, it'll all integrate right into here for your description and the different tests and pin functions, diagrams, waveforms even, TSB reference, look at all this stuff it gives you, connector. Um, so over here you have the identifix, direct hits, reported ones, Mitchell, all data, and report, uh, there's the hotline I believe. Yep, hotline. Uh, but what's really nice is this one right here, Google. So as long as you're connected to an internet source, you put it, you hit Google on there and it automatically brings up all the information you need. It'll automatically query Google for you, which I know a lot of you technicians out there use. If I'm working on anything but a Ford, a lot of times I'll get some basic background on a DTC from Google. You know, you get a basic sense, basic direction, and then you do the actual diagnostics on your particular vehicle from there. Boom. You get a lot of information, and you can start figuring out the problem. Let's go back to the home screen real quick. I want to show you a few spe special functions that the PCM can do on here, and then we'll go try this on my 15 RAM. So bring up a couple different special functions on here. And there's a few I want to show you. There's a lot of tests on injector tests for the um, um, different options on there. One touch start status, starter motor output. Look at all these different tests for the transmission in here. EVAP tests, very, very important to have EVAP leak test on there. Let's go to engine tests though. And let's go to the power balance. So we can show you this. This is really cool. It's actually a really good power balance on here and it looks just like it does on the Ford IDS. Dare I say it has a better refresh rate than the IDS too. You'll see it here in a second once it boots up on there. It's not the vehicle is running. It's giving all kinds of more warnings. Don't do this. Don't do that. And right there. Look at that live in real time you get to see the power balance of the engine now what's also nice is that on the newer um well the older vehicles they started including the injector disabling function they used to only have this like on i would say 2012 and newer so ford started integrating this back into the older vehicles and you can see even the encore has it what's nice is that you can use this for a lot of good information actually so we can pick the injector oh let's pick uh three there's only four on here and let's disable what it's going to do is going to test the output of the injector driver right there that we're able to control it and not only that it gives us a general idea about the timing of the engine how well it's identifying each one of the cylinders we disabled it and guess what it identified number three no problem on there let's enable it again on there now, the other function is, of course, the deep Vs like you see right there. That means there is a dead miss. So what's nice is that it does histogram it, but it also clears it out after a while so that you have a, a good general sense of what's going on currently and within the last few seconds on there. So it keeps it nice and clean for us. Let's get out of here and go to the relative compression test because I haven't tried that on here yet. That's another great function of the Ford software built in right into these uh, PCMs. So you really need to pay attention to these different screens on here else will kick you out. So right now I want to make sure the engine's off and follow those instructions. So foot to the floor. Okay, make sure the key's on. Foot to the floor. Continue. Begin cranking. And this screen actually looks very, very close to the IDS on here. It just counts down 10 seconds, and then we're going to get some results on here. Right there. So right there, we don't get the fancy bars like on the IDS. I know I'm comparing a lot to the IDS, but that's what I'm used to on there. But we do get 
the relative compression compared to each one of the other cylinders on here. So they're pretty much zero across the board, which means they all have about the same amount of compression. Relative compression and uh, the power balance, they all use the information from the other cylinders on here. The same thing with the relative injector flow. They use the information from the other injectors to compare to each other. So right here, we know the compression is good that quick on the engine. A lot of great functions on here that they integrated right in here. Let's go over to the Ram and try that out next. Okay, now for the Ram Eco Diesel. The one thing that OTC has told me that they're really pushing is the domestic diesel functionality. So you'll notice on this Ram Eco Diesel, there's a lot of special tests that are integrated right into the Encore on here, the very important ones that you're going to come across uh, quite a bit. And that has to do with the DEF system, the SCR system, and the DPF on here, all these emission components on here. So here's all the special tests that you can get into on here, mass airflow, calibration, all the different options for the SCR system after replacement of certain items, dosing tests, and then you get that back into the DEF pump and, uh, and the DPF down here after replacement. All very important uh, different functions that you're going to need working on these new emission systems. The other one down here that's nice too is also the throttle valve uh, or throttle plate. You can calibrate that on there too. That's a nice little function uh, because these don't auto calibrate like the Fords do. Not as easily anyways. So that's a nice little function. But let's get into some live data on here. And we'll just show you a few different functions of the live data stream. Now, once you go into the controller and then you pick the live data stream, they're going to give you a couple of different groups on here just to try to help you out because there is so many different PIDs you can select. Now, what you can do is either select that whole group right there by hitting select or you can customize each one. So let's hit select and we'll go to all data groups. Why not? Okay, there we go. Get a little angle going there. So right there, it's showing us all the live data for everything um, on the engine right now and there's two different pages so right now it's all digital so it's a lot easier for it to um, refresh very easily and show you all this in real time on here so what you can do if you want to watch all this data on here is let's start the vehicle so we get some numbers moving here there we go some rail pressure stuff like that I'll give you guys something to look at what we can do, you see down here, it says that the data is buffering. You can record this data live. Okay, you see it recording down there? And we can record it. So let's say we go on a road test. We're trying to duplicate the concern. We come back. We can review this data while it's nice and safe, and we can see what was exactly going on. And then once you're done, you just hit the check mark again. It'll save the recording. And they can go up here to the playback, and you go to the different ones right here. Now, what you also can do is, is, is expand these out. So we can expand it out once, and then we can expand it out again. There you go, that's the biggest it gets, I believe. No, it goes down to one, actually. So we can expand it once again. If you really need a big old screen, this is full screen right now, showing one pit on here. So you can see the fuel rail pressure right now, and you can simply swipe left or right to get the other information on here also. And then you could, of course, go back down to two, which I think is good, a good size on here. This way you can get a lot of information real quick. Let me bring it back down once again on here. Now, the one other thing you can do if you don't like this line graph option is you can go into each one of these, and let's say I want digital for that. I just want numbers. And it'll also um, record your low, average, and high on there for this current period. So you can kind of have a histogram almost still with this digital gauge on here. So that's pretty cool uh, to have all these options like this on here. And what's the other one? We have bar graph, which I usually don't like too much. I prefer digital or line graph on there personally. But let's go to the playback. Let's go the one yesterday. There it is. So that's what I, I recorded yesterday on here. And you can check it out and try to diagnose whatever you're diagnosing on there uh, while you're back at the shop. 
All right, that's about it, guys. I don't want to overload you too much in one video. So next time, look out for generic OBD2 functions and menus on here so we can give you a good sense of what you can do on vehicles that the, the scan tool cannot auto ID. There's still a lot you can do with global or generic OBD2. So we'll go over that next time, and I'll see you then.